up guys man here with another video and in this one i'm going to show you one of my secret weapons which is the erm multi-clock this thing is just amazing it's a sync box and it keeps everything in sync when you start working with hardware daws and all this other stuff and you start recording your music so yeah let's hit the studio and let's get this thing done guys so what is the erm multi-clock well it's a sync box which is built to overcome all the problems that go with having hardware and the, the synchronization of external sequencers drum machines or pageators and pretty much external gear right or in my own words is the box that will help you sync all your machines together the reason why i got it is because i got the octatrack mark one and when i was trying to like sync it with my daw it was out of sync it was having a lot of midi jitter and uh, it was horrible to make music he wanted to produce tracks then you can possibly sell on beatport uh, apple music and all this other stuff right but if it doesn't sync up then your production is gonna sound really horrible so i started digging into this and uh, it turns out that the octatrack mark one has a different like midi algorithm or something like that where like it's not going to sync up with the daw so i went into this rabbit hole and found out what midi jitter was and basically it refers to the inconsistent and random delays in a system uh so once you start hooking up different machines that were built in different like time frames and like all this other stuff like the midi signals or din or like all the other um like clocks don't really sync up so when i would start making music it would take me forever to like get my system to where like it would like sound uh all synced and then i was wasting more time in that so i figured you know there has to be a way of, to get over this and then i found the erm multi-clock so if you want to record music and to make tracks and to have them playing in the dance floor this is probably like my best solution that i found that works best and it comes down to taking care of midi jitter to have everything in sync and everything consistent so on the left hand side you'll see you know that you have the shift knobs and then you have the shuffle knobs so with the shift knobs what you do is you dial in or compensate with whatever jitter you might have between your DAW, your hardware, or your other machines when they're hooked up together, right? And then with the shuffle, you know, you can you can add some shuffle to the rhythms that you're building, to the sounds that you're building, and that is <laughs> just a game changer. Like, you don't have to do it directly on your uh, hardware or your DAW, you would do it directly here with the multi-clock. And then, you know, at the bottom, you have the, the channel buttons or like the play button buttons right so whenever you hit those buttons the cool thing about it is that once they're yellow right is that they're going to turn off and once you they go red it's going to wait until the next bar for that channel to get played with the rest of the hardware that you have all synced up here on the right hand side you have the setup screen and that's where you set up all your preferences for this multi-clock you know you're going to set up your clock source so with the clock source you can have it coming from an audio source you can use your inter the internal clock of the multi-clock to send clock to the different machines if you're not using a daw then you're able to use midi in so let's say that your your interface has midi and that's the one that's going to sync all the other machines so you would send the midi clock to the end of the multi-clock and that will like send the midi clock to the other machines interesting and then you have the usb MIDI. So this one's when you connect your computer through MIDI to the multi-clock and then that's going to send the signal of the clock of your machine to the multi-clock and that's going to get reproduced to the other machines that you have hooked up to the uh, multi-clock and then you had DIN sync which is the same thing right like your external machines that had DIN sync they are the ones who are going to be sending the signal to the multi-clock are the ones that are going to be pretty much the masters of this setup okay so then you have your time signature this is to be able to start slaves always in sync with the downbeat of the next bar right so what i was talking about earlier <coughs> where you know if you like hit the buttons right whenever the light turns red that's when they start going so basically the time signature is going to tell 
all the other machines that are clocked with the multi-clock when to start and then we go to the configuration the midi mapper is when you where you set everything up for all your different machines so the way that I have it set up for my system, channel one is actually channel 11 because that's the way that I have set up my OctoTrack. My OctoTrack sends MIDI out to the MIDI in of the uh, multi-clock, which helps me use the MIDI sequencer of the OctoTrack to help with the sequencing of the analog four that goes from channel two through five. Then I have it set up for my Digitone. So you can like set it up on and on, uh, like uh, then I have my sub 37 and everything all rigged up here, which is really cool. So that's pretty much how to set up the multi-clock to work with uh, your setup then we'll go on how to like set it up with your DAW so if you're new to my channel hit the bell click subscribe so you can get my latest videos in your feed all right back to the video I use logic so how you set it up is you know you get your plug-in to your DAW you put it into an empty track then the plug-in interface you set it up to uh, send the time signature and then it's going to send the BPM that is being played so it basically it would be like as if it was generating a kick but it has like a different sound to it and that's going to help us sync all the other machines through audio so if there's like a tiny change in the BPM from the AW or from the machines are going to get triggered as well so like everything matches up really really well and nice so again you can sync it up with your uh, interface so you assign an output that's going to go to an output on the back of your interface and i have it set up here with uh, my uad apollo and once you have the clock sending signal to the output of the apollo everything is going to be in sync and that's pretty much how you set it up with adaw then let me show you how it sounds and how i have it set up with with some synthesizer so i'm going to use my octo track and then i'm going to use the digitone just real quick let me set it up right now i'm going to be controlling the digitone and all the signals are going to go through a uh, multi-clock and everything is going to be synced to my daw the daw is going to have the kick and it's going to be the one guiding the, the sounds that are going to be like generated through the MIDI tracks of the Octatrack to the Digitone and the Digitone is going to be the one who is going to be sending the, the sound out of the of the machines that are going to be played and then we'll record it and I'll show you how in sync everything is. So pretty much I'm going to start with a really basic basic arpeggio and then I'm gonna switch it up here on the Octatrack. So I'm adding notes on the Digitone. Besides that arpeggio that I created with the Octatrack. Nothing crazy. But the cool thing is that the kick is coming from the DAW. So now I'm gonna stop it with my phone so you can see that I'm controlling the DAW with my phone. And then I'm gonna play it with my phone again. And of course, you know, you could be sampling back into the octo track and then sending the sound directly to the DAW. Uh, at this point only so so the patterns were recorded directly to the digitone so you can mangle that but everything is in sync with the kick coming from the DAW So now 
I'm gonna control a hat from the Digitone. Let me find a hat here. So the idea is for me to like ride the hats with the OctiTrack. So I'm also going to be using like two different ways of like generating the hats. One is gonna be the arpeggiator. And one is just like uh, by just sequencing all the sounds. So right now I'm going to control the channel that has the, the hats. And now they're all gonna sound. Though everything is in sync. Before, this will be like the kick wouldn't sound the same with the rest of the of the machines when I was like doing it directly. So yeah, it, it was just a mess. Yeah, so the cool thing about using the arpeggio with the off-track is the fact that like you can add a lot of variations to, to like whatever you're sequencing with the off track with, sorry. I love the the arpeggiator from the off track. The sequencer and everything is just amazing. Okay, so now we're going to record what's going on in the Digitone to the DAW. So you guys can see that everything is in sync. And I'm gonna turn the other ones off just so you guys can see that everything is in sync. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let this one sound, the one that we just recorded, so you guys can hear that everything was recorded. Nothing is getting played to the octave track or the digitone because the sound coming from the, the plugin from the multi clock is not playing. So now I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna duplicate this so we have, you know, 16 bars. And then I'm gonna turn off some of the kicks. And I made a mistake here of not chopping, so remember to cut this out. So again, you know, the up track and the G-turn are not working because there's no sound coming from the plugin. So it's pretty unique way of working. I think that, um, to be honest with you guys, if you're getting a little bit tired of uh, <laughs> having things not like line up properly, this is the way to go. It is a little bit expensive. Uh, I'm sure that there are some other options out there. I think that um, Roland has one, and I think that uh, there's, a, there's another company that has something similar to this. Um, it is worth the money. If you're working with uh, a lot of hardware, just to have everything, you know, like matching up. So when you jam, you record, everything is sound, sounds good. Everything is sounding tight. Because if not, having to go back and like if you're using like, you know, Ableton or like whatever, like warping and like all that stuff, it just takes time, you know. Once you're in the creative process, you want to make sure that it doesn't like block you mentally from having everything down the way that you want it. You know, like uh, it's, it's crazy the little things that will make you become a little bit more creative. But I think this is one of those things that I would recommend you guys have in your arsenal um, or find something similar, you know? Um, 
Yeah, I think that once you start working with DAWs and recording your tracks and like all this other stuff uh, from hardware, I think it's important to have everything match up. So, yeah, this is the ERM multi clock. Let me know what you think. If you're using one, please let me know how you're using it. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, all right, thank you. Have a good night.